Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and on my Nexus 6, I have the latest version of Android, Android M, the developer preview. What does the M stand for? Usually the easiest way to find that out is to just go to the Easter egg and tap the logo a bunch, and whatever rains down is what it stands for. So on Android L, when you tap that logo a bunch, lollipops rain down, Android lollipop. In Android M, when you tap that logo a bunch, it just kind of shrugs at you. So we don't have a name for it yet. Maybe leave a comment of what you think the name is going to be. My bet is on Milkshake. So Android M is not a huge update by any means. It's more of a 5.2 update with a focus on polish and clarity. And it's mostly just a ton of tweaks. It's got a couple of new features and tricks up its sleeve here and there, but this could mostly be a top five tweaks video. So the number five best feature is volume controls. And this might seem like a little thing, because it is, but it's been wrong for so long in stock Android that it's awesome to finally see it here. And it's been so obvious that other manufacturers have built it into their skins correctly when in Google's it's been wrong. Now you can hit the volume down button all the way down to zero volume and get to silent mode. And then you can hit volume down again to get to do not disturb mode. And there's also a little cog to expand to have different separate MIDI controls for media volume or ringtone volume or notification volume. Finally, it's right again and it should have been this way the whole time. Number four is fingerprint reading is now built in natively into Android. And what this means is you can now log into your device using your fingerprint. You can buy apps from the Play Store with your fingerprint, and you can even use Android Pay with your fingerprint. And also this is a wide open API as you would expect from something from Google. So that means you'll not only encourage more manufacturers to build a fingerprint reader into their phone, but also you encourage more application makers to build in fingerprint reading into their app. So in any app where you might buy something like your banking app or any other in-app purchase, you can use your fingerprint. Number three, I would classify as all these little tweaks, a bunch of the little things. Uh, some of them are visual, like the lock screen has a little bit of a different looking clock that looks a bit better now. But some of them are functional too. So the quick settings get a do not disturb toggle right there. Uh, you can also now control the individual permissions for every app. So if you want uh, the Facebook app, for example, to no longer have access to your microphone and your camera, you can turn those off individually. So very nice security features that I think a lot of people are gonna take advantage of. Uh, copy and paste now automatically selects forward word by word, which is awesome and easy. You can now make a portable hotspot that's 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. And there's even a light and a dark theme, at least in the settings. I didn't really find anywhere else that this light and dark theme affected the OS, but the light and dark theme in the setting is there and it works and it's pretty awesome. They're not all good tweaks though. The one thing I found that I didn't really like is the new app drawer in the Google Now launcher. It's now a vertically scrolling, spaced out alphabetical list of all your apps. It does have a search bar, but that's about the only good thing about it. It's a lot uglier in my opinion uh, than the original. Uh, and it is a developer preview, so in theory, it could be switched back to the horizontally scrolling alphabetical list like before. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a worse app drawer than we had previously. And hopefully they switch it back. So the number two feature is something called Doze. So essentially what this does is it reads all the sensors of your phone or tablet, stuff like your gyroscope and accelerometer and ambient light sensor to determine if your device is idle. And if it sees this, then it'll cut down on all the background activity and all the background refreshes of your apps to extend your standby time by a lot. And I love this. I love any improvement we can get to improve the standby time of a device. And hopefully this will bring it closer to something like you can get on an iPad. Some, sometimes I'll leave an iPad on a shelf and I'll come back to it a week later and it still has battery left. And that's never something I've been able to do with my Nexus 9, for example. So hopefully with Doze, we'll see much longer, much improved standby times for stuff like tablets, and even phones. Maybe I'll come back to a phone a couple hours after I put it up and it'll have plenty of battery life left. So any battery life improvements are welcome and Doze is great. And the number one improvement to Android M is Google Now. And Google Now is already a pretty awesome predictive information service for, I mean, it has basically zero competition. I mean, let's be honest, Siri and Cortana, pretty good voice search assistants, but they don't get anywhere near the level of functionality of Google Now. And yet Google continues to use all the data they have to make it better and better, as they should. This year, you know, we get a bunch more cards that are improved. We get a bunch more information before we even search for it. That's the kind of stuff we're used to with Google now. But now the trick up its sleeve is something called Now on Tap. So from anywhere on any screen on your phone, you can hold down the home button to get Google Now cards relevant to whatever's on your screen. Unfortunately, this is not working fully in the developer preview, but from what we saw in the keynote and all the demos, it looks awesome. Essentially, maybe you're texting someone about a business 
Now on tap, we'll let you hold the home button and get those cards about maybe a map of where the business is, a shortcut to call them, to navigate there, etc. It reads what's on your screen and gives you relevant info. Let's say you're on Twitter and you're scrolling and you see a tweet about a new movie. Uh, you can tap on long press on that home button and get info on a nearby movie theater and info on the ratings and the actors and everything in the movie. Basically, it reads what's on your screen and gives you information that will help you. Uh, some might say that's a little bit creepy and a little bit weird, but on the other hand, it's super helpful and borderline genius. So those are your top features in Android M. Like I said, the update itself is not a huge visual change, but it's got a bunch of little tweaks and things, and that's not even the full list. I'll leave a link to the full list of all the improvements of the Android M developer preview, and we'll probably see even more tweaks when we see the final version of Android M. There's even some things that aren't even specific to the software. Stuff like Android Pay is new. It's got a pretty familiar name to Apple Pay, of course, but it's essentially an improved version of Google Wallet, now with carrier support, now with fingerprint support. Uh, we also now have Google Photos. The Google Photos app is pretty important. It's this giant archiving, backup, search, and organizational service for all of your photos ever, and it's free. So that's pretty impressive and should give iCloud a run for its money, at least for people who are paying for photo backup. And also USB-C support, which should give us a pretty good idea of what port to see in the next Nexus when it comes out. So there you have it, guys. That is M on my Nexus 6. I'm gonna continue using it. Uh, if I find things like Doze actually improves my battery life, I'll let you guys know on Twitter. Uh, and if I find other tweaks that are helping it out too, I'll let you know. Uh, and definitely let me know what you guys think the M stands for in Android M. Someone in the comments is going to get it right. It's just a matter of time to when we figure it out what it is. Either way, if you like this video, feel free to leave a thumbs up below. And also further below, there's a subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.